Hi, Steve here. This is the last video in the series on creating generative art. Or not. I might add more later. We'll see. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I start and finish projects. Then I'll give you some brief parting advice. And finally, I want to let you know that I've created a website with a list of gen art resources for you, and you're going to want to bookmark that resource page. I'm going to speed run through those resources later in the video. If you've gotten to this video, good for you. Thank you for sticking with it through the end. There will always be more you can learn, but if you've watched all the videos in this series, then you should have a good foundation for making generative art. I hope you've learned a lot and have started to create some art you're proud of. And I hope you keep learning and creating. If you feel like you've gotten some value out of this course, please consider supporting me on Patreon or click on the thanks button below. Now, some stuff about starting and finishing projects. There are several ways I get started. One, I'm trying to copy another artist's technique or maybe trying to achieve some effect such as making a watercolor look. Two, I learn something new from a video or a blog post and I play around with that new tool. Three, I mash two ideas together. And four, I have some vision for what I want to create. And in that case, I usually start with drawing on paper. But in all cases, there's a rough sketch to start, a proof of concept. I'll start with something simple and gradually make it more complex. Sometimes I'll add comments to the code about what I plan to add, or if I want a complex shape somewhere, I might start with a simple shape as a placeholder until I build out that part. There is often some happy accident that happens, some surprising output, and then I try to build on that. I'm always following the energy. I often duplicate my sketches, also known as forking, so that if I have something working and I want to make a big change, I have the old code I can revert to if things go off the rails. I share my work in process on Discord, Twitter, and Reddit. At some point, I might ask for feedback. Often, I'm looking at the P5 reference pages or Googling how to do something or asking other artists on social media how to do something specific. Some of my code I will pull over from other sketches of mine, though I often have to tweak it to fit my new sketch. Sometimes I have algorithms that I build that are maybe one of 10 shapes or patterns or scenes. And as I hone in on a finished product, I might cut some of those algorithms out if they're not as cool as the others I'm using, or it looks like an outlier from the rest of the project. Cutting can feel painful because I might have spent several hours working on one of those scenes or shapes, but cutting is necessary so that the finished product looks as good as possible. There are a lot of hours spent tweaking for the best outputs and working on color palettes. And then if I'm going to make it into an NFT, then I'm adding in the code necessary for that and working out issues with it working on the platform I'm using. If I'm using params on FX hash so that the user gets to choose different parameters, then there's some room for bad outputs because people are going to be tweaking it for themselves, so there won't really be any bad outputs. But if I'm not using params, if people are just going to get whatever they get, then every output has to be good. My criteria for a finished product is that it has to be something I'd be proud to hang on my wall and invite my friends over to look at which is a very different criteria from sharing at the start of the project. When it's a work in progress, I'm sharing almost everything, though it's curated. I'm just saying, hey, here's what I'm playing around with right now. So I think that's enough about my process. Now for a bit of advice. This will be short. Remember everything I said in the video on being a generative artist. Make art that's authentically you. Try to not compare yourself to others. Give yourself permission to make bad art before you make good art. Share your art and ask for feedback. You can try recreating what others have done, but then find a way to make it your own. Play around, mash things together, try new things. If you don't have an art background, I suggest learning about art composition and design. Look at lots of art. Consider doing other kinds of art besides gen art. Keep a log of ideas and works in progress. 
I have a Word document I use for that and include pictures of one of the outputs from each project. Try minimalism and using fewer colors or black and white. If we're using nice color palettes all the time, then almost everything will look good. So take the color palettes away so you can focus on form and composition. A lot of my work has been about mimicking real world art, but there are many who prefer to lean into the digital medium. So consider exploring that as well. Okay, that's it for the advice bit. Now, I said at the beginning that I created a list of resources. I don't want to bore you, but I do want you to get a taste of what's out there. So we're going to speed run through these resources. Here's the resource page we're going to be going over. You can see there's a lot of stuff here. First, I want to refer you to the rest of my channel. I have lots of videos here for you to check out. I've highlighted a few of these. There's animating the drawing process of your static art in P5JS resizing your art, especially if you're going to sell on FX hash and how to get started buying NFT art on FX hash and object. Check out the coding train website. If you haven't already, there is one section on algorithmic botany. So lots of things about creating ferns and trees. There's this series on object oriented programming, and there's some videos about vectors in the nature of code series. Then there's that creative code page, which has a huge amount of resources, lots of links to all sorts of creative coding stuff. So you're going to want to check that out for sure. And if you get to the bottom, notice that there's a load more button and there's even more stuff. There are also artist blogs. This is Gorilla Sun's blog. He also has a newsletter that I suggest you subscribe to. There's Tyler Hobbs. He has a bunch of blog posts. Amy Goodchild has a bunch of blog posts. SigHack has a bunch of blog posts. And then this Generative Arts Creative Coding page has a whole bunch of blog posts. SableRaf has creative coding challenges. People on his Discord pick out what the challenges are going to be. And then he goes over the submissions in his Twitch channel. Draw and Make Code has some good videos. At least one of them is how to make a pine tree. Kazuki Umeda has an excellent channel how to make flowers, and also the gradient effect and the glow effect. There are several NFT platform YouTube channels that have artist interviews, including AOI, 256 Art, and Art Blocks. This video by Benjamin Kravach, uh, he talks about the Generative Artist Toolkit, going over a lot of the different types of algorithms that Generative Artists use. If you want to have your code on your computer instead of using the P5 web editor, Visual Studio Code is an excellent choice and there are introductory videos on how to use Visual Studio Code. There's the 3JS library for making 3D content. Uh, there's the FX hash for selling NFTs and buying NFTs. Open Processing is an online editor you can use instead of the P5 editor. And this has artists sharing both screenshots of their code and also the code itself. There's the right triangle side calculator I showed you before. There's the January prompts for January of each year. This is the generative discord you can join. There's a generative page on Reddit and a creative coding page on Reddit. Shaders are an advanced topic, but if you want to learn more about shaders, I have several resources for that. An intro for those using P5. The Book of Shaders, Barney Code's YouTube channel has an introduction to shaders and several excellent videos on shaders, and the Art of Code YouTube channel has a whole bunch of stuff on shaders. Be sure to bookmark my resource page for future reference. Okay, that's it for the resources. It's possible I might add videos to this series in the future, but for now, this concludes the series. Please post your art on my Discord. I'd love to see what you've made. Thank you for joining me on this adventure, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!